As a kid, I was a bit of a tomboy. I was always outdoors, climbing trees, but that was about as far as adventure went with my family. I came from a smallish city called Norwich. None of my family have been to uni before. I just wanted to get out and try something different. I love living in London, but it is tiring to, to live in it. It is always busy. Between lectures and working in the hospital, life is quite frantic. Sometimes I catch myself daydreaming about getting away. And the opportunity to join a medical research expedition to the High Atlas of Morocco came at the perfect time. Over 80 million people live at a high altitude, but we still don't fully understand what's happening to our bodies. Although we all had some summer walking experience, winter mountaineering was new to all of us. And in some way we were reflective of the 40 million adventure travellers going to altitude each year. All our projects were aimed at improving our understanding of how our bodies work at altitude. We looked at cardiovascular fitness, how the eye changes and how people cope with the psychological pressures from expedition. We took quite a lot of kit. As well as our winter climbing gear, we had to carry various pieces of medical equipment. We took measurements at different altitudes and at each refuge with some of the measurements looking a bit weirder to onlookers than others. It was really difficult to combine research and an expedition. We'd get back with wet feet, tired and hungry, knowing that we'd have hours of data collection to do. For those of us that were a bit squeamish, the eye projects were a bit of an ask and quite invasive. The eye changes a lot at altitude with changes in your vision, pressure, and your pupils. All you want to do is relax and drink tea and eat food and recover because you know it's coming the next day again. But knowing we were doing it for a reason made it worth it. There's a well-known phenomenon called the third quarter effect about three quarters of the way through an expedition, people really start to struggle. You are prone to low mood, you're struggling with the physical requirements of the expedition, you're perhaps fed up with the food, you're not feeling well, you're deprived of sleep. All those emotions are going and lots of people give up. Part of our research was to try and identify this at an earlier stage and by doing that, help support people better. Our trip was like any other, and the day before summit day was absolutely exhausting. With really difficult weather conditions, really cold. And the snow was kind of knee deep, so each step we took, you would sink. Everyone had their low moments and found their own ways of getting through them. The summit morning, I was nervous. I was very nervous. And I was preparing myself for a day very similar, though I knew that we would be walking even further. Breathing became more difficult, and it was quite scary, to be honest. But the views are incredible. They're absolutely unreal. Expeditions are all about living with people you don't really know, but making it work. You spend time in a pressure cooker with other people. <laughs> and 
for good or for bad, they make lasting impressions on you. Lots of people feel fundamentally changed when they get back. It was a great feeling and so rewarding. These ecosystems are fragile. Travelling to these places is rightly scrutinised. Visiting them is a privilege. It's paramount that we do our bit to look after them for the future. Whilst at the same time striving to improve the human body's ability to cope with them.